Welcome to the first episode of Woman to Woman, Conversations in Black and White. I'm Bernadette. And I'm Linda. And we are going to share the story today with you of how we met, got acquainted, and came to have these amazing conversations. Yes. So we didn't write this down, and I'm just going to start. Mm -hmm. so Bernadette and I found out that we have been neighbors about four houses away from each other on the same street mm -hmm. for about eight years now. Mm -hmm. She calls it wave neighbors. We were wave yes. neighbors. Yes. But we didn't really know each other, except we knew we both had an interest in gardening. Mm -hmm. So I garden more in the backyard than I do in the front yard. But this particular day was five days after George Floyd's murder. And my heart was just weeping. It seemed like even though I'd never been deliberately racist, I was understanding things that I had never really grasped before as a white woman. And I was aching and I had no idea what to do. And I was working out in my front garden and I remember off and on for two or three days, I had been praying, God, show me what to do. I have no idea what to do. And synchronistically, the way prayers sometimes get answered, that evening as I was working out in the front garden instead of the back, Bernadette came walking by with her husband, whom I had never met or never really even seen before. Mm -hmm. And I immediately felt just as if a butterfly had landed on my hand. I thought, oh, this is my, this is my chance. They didn't go walking by our house all that often anyway. Mm -hmm. And so I started talking to her. I said hello, and they stopped for a moment, and and we talked about garden and the possibility mm -hmm. of raising chickens in our neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And I just felt so heartful, like I needed to do something, and this was an answer to prayer, but I still didn't know what to do. So finally, just out of a sense of heart, I just said, how are you doing? Mm -hmm. And she must have known that I actually meant it. Mm -hmm. So Bernadette? Yes, because I, my answer to the question was not good. But on our way to their home, and like Linda said, yes, they were wave neighbors. I would wave um, more so with her husband, Stan, because he's out front more, like Linda said. So I would always wave at Stan. We would see each other. Rarely caught Linda. But that particular, it was about four or five days after George Floyd, and we were going, we were going to just take a walk because, for one, my husband, is, he's a sizable black man. He played football, high school, and football. And so in order for him to take a walk and be able to enjoy his walk, he either needs to go with the kids, the dog, or with me, so he can either look like a dad, a pet owner, or a family man, and not a threat. And so we were going to take a walk that day because we needed some air. And so as we're coming up the street, we see Stan and Linda outside. And Robert was raised in Arkansas, so it's been a whole lot of blatant in your face racism that he has seen his whole life. And so we're walking up the street and he was like, I'm not feeling like white people today. I was like, they? He was like, I'm not feeling them. I was like, I understand. I was like, but Stan is cool. I said, and I, I don't know his wife much, but she's gotta be if she's married to Stan. And so we get up there and we talk and we chit chat and she has on her overalls and they're telling us about the different plants in the front yard and all those, and we're talking about chickens and everything else. And then Linda, she, she just did, she asked, she goes, how are you? And I said, not good. And I could have said, we're okay. And nothing would have happened. But her question to me was honest. And so my answer to her was honest. And so from there, we have had a whole host of conversations with each other, with our family, with our children, with friends, with church members, with anyone who's willing to have a conversation. <laughs> and so that is how we have somewhat came to be. And our hope is we recognize that change has to start with neighbors talking to each other. Human beings to human beings connecting with each other and recognizing, oh, I never even thought about your life being different in that way. And so that's been a lot of the realizations that both of us have come to as we've started this journey. Mm -hmm. Yes, I completely concur. I mm -hmm. don't know anything else to add except that she and I began texting back and forth 
Yes. And within a couple of days, I said, would you and your family like to come for some dessert on the deck on Sunday evening? And mm -hmm. they immediately said yes. So we mm -hmm. had all six of us, their two kids, and yep. Stan and me on our deck and our dog mm -hmm. on a Sunday evening. And we all knew that we were there not only to talk about gardens and neighbors, yes. but to talk mm -hmm. about the issues of racism from their point of view and from our point of view. Mm -hmm. and to learn from each other. And it has been that. It has truly been a learning experience. And mm -hmm. I even dared after a few weeks to ask her a really hard question, which we'll get to in a later yes. Um, yes. a later session. But we will entertain, eventually we'll entertain uh, questions from you, our listeners, mm -hmm. when we have a format established for that. So Yes. And so we're going to talk about the stuff that there's almost no space to talk about. We're going to talk about the difference between white women's tears and black women's tears, between a black woman being upset and a white woman being upset, between what real estate looks like, depending upon what color you are, how our children have the ability to be educated, depending upon your zip code, which was dependent upon the color you are. So there's a whole host of subjects that, we're, that we are going to be having that we encourage you to join in on the conversation and to start those conversations in your own lives as well. Yes. And one of our sessions will be suggestions on how to start these conversations yes. because we are fully aware that not every white woman and not every black woman actually wants to have these hard conversations. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. finding people that you can have these conversations with may not happen just like that, but it can happen. Mm -hmm. And we discovered that I have other black friends, but I had never discussed racism with her. And she has right. other white friends and I don't know at what level and they I have discussed this. I had never, I have, I have, well, where we live is predominantly white society. So most of my friends are white, but they had not, they were not aware of how different my life was based on skin color. Yes, we're all trying to raise kids. Yes, we all have husbands, this, that. Yes, we all have vacations, but there's a whole different segment to my life that they were completely unaware of based solely, that I experienced based solely on skin color. All right. Well, mm -hmm. so grateful to be your friend, Bernadette. And as you can see, yes. we're, Mm -hmm. We're four houses away instead of in mm -hmm. the same room because of the coronavirus, but that yes. works well anyway. Mm -hmm. So, all right, checking out for now, and we'll come back with some other topics. Thank, Thank you. you. Mm -hmm.